So I was uh, at the library earlier, or actually not the library, it was Barnes Noble, um, and I was just looking through the philosophy section and I saw this book, um, a spine, that said, uh, it was titled Objective Knowledge. So I was like, wow, must be uh, some interesting stuff in there. And it was uh, a book by Karl Popper, coincidentally, who um, somebody had recommended that I read um, to get a better understanding of uh, of science and the lack of teleology in evolution. Um, so I looked in the index for teleology and uh, Popper talked about Darwin and um, I'm going to read what he said there. Um, Darwin's revolutionary influence upon our picture of the world around us was at least as great but not as deep as Newton's. For Darwin's theory of natural selection showed that it is in principle possible to reduce teleology to causation by explaining in purely physical terms the existence of design and purpose in the world. What Darwin showed us was that the mechanism of natural selection can, in principle, simulate the actions of the creator and his purpose and design, and that it can also simulate rational human action directed toward a purpose or aim. If this is correct, then we could say from the point of view of biological method that Darwin showed that we are all completely free to use teleological explanation in biology, even those of us who happen to believe that all explanation ought to be causal. For what he showed was precisely that in, that in principle, any particular teleological ex explanation may one day be reduced to or further explained by a causal explanation. Although this was a great achievement, we have to add that the phrase in principle is, very, is a very important restriction. Neither Darwin nor any Darwinian has so far given an actual causal explanation of the adaptive evolution of any single organism or any single organ. All that has been shown, and this is in fact very much, is that such explanation might exist, that is to say, that such an explanation is logically possible. Um, so I think this is a bit of a concession by a pretty good philosopher of science, um, that the idea that um, evolution can truly get rid of teleology is a belief that some scientists have um, because it's it's a principle it's a theory um, they can't be proven right uh, it can only be falsified um, so in other words it's not that the theory of evolution has found the answer to how life evolved it has found um, a possibility which hasn't been proven wrong yet. Um, and I think it won't be proven wrong until there's a paradigm shift. And um, this is, I guess, bringing another, another philosopher of science into the mix, uh, Thomas Kuhn. Um, the idea is that we will always confirm the current Darwinian theory of evolution so long as we are looking to confirm it, so long as our structure of perceiving the so-called physical world is um, constituted by some underlying um, schema that um, only allows us to um, understand the world in the particular causal way the non-teleological way that Darwin has prescribed as a method. Um, in other words, until our perception, until the paradigm changes or shifts, the method that we use to investigate nature will not find um, evidence to uh, contradict the Darwinian picture. So. You know, there's no doubt in my mind that that evidence will turn up because, you know, the history of science, if anything, reveals that uh, uh, we're always not necessarily um, proving old, 
paradigms incorrect, but finding wider um, paradigms which encompass the, the prior paradigms and, and show how they were right part of the time, but there's a bigger picture. And Darwinianism is definitely on to something, but I think there's a bigger picture. Um, this idea that we can only, in principle, confirm the Darwinian picture that natural selection can account for the actual traits of organisms and their organs which exist today. This is the problem with um, scientific objectification uh, to begin with, that it's always sort of a promised, uh, uh, it's a promised knowledge, it's not a knowledge that you have, it's an in principle we could one day understand all of it and um, it's sort of like uh, we take it on faith that we eventually will that the theory that we currently hold is correct and we have to do that in order to really practice science because um, otherwise we'd just be you know engaging in any other kind of social um, socially normative dialogue and it, or um, just a, um, a normal conversation and not a scientific investigation. So we have to assume our theories are correct, which, you know, that's what it means to talk about uh, things in principle, hypothetically, but then we remove the direct immediate meaning life has, which is why I'm, I'm kind of um, skeptical of the idea that objective knowledge is the only thing we should value, because there is such a thing as subjective worth and, and goodness and beauty that isn't explained away or encompassed by scientific object, uh, objectivity. It's, it's another realm entirely that we still need to consider. And the Darwinian explanation seems to, uh, in principle, negate the um, causal powers or the importance of these subjective experiences of value and meaning. Um, it seems to make them superfluous and kind of, um, they're nothing but appearances. They're illusions created by this blind material um, collision of atoms that happens to form into a certain um, organic shape because of um, natural selection. I mean, there's got to be a bigger picture than that, I think. I guess... Um, I guess time will tell.